Hi book friends. Um, I'm going to be going over some books that uh, were from the probably well this one's going to be from the 2000s I think. Let's see. Yep these are all in the year 2000 and above. These are all books that I think are worthy of giving a second look if you haven't ever read them before. Um, and if I have a weird halo effect going on here, so it looks like I've got the book angels above me going, oh, um, this is my overhead light and I've tried to do some different things, but it was a little dark the last one I did. So just, I'm blessed. I'm blessed with books. Um, okay. The first one I'm going to discuss is called Killer Stuff by Sharon Pfeiffer. It came out in 2001. It's a Jane Wheel number one, and there's eight books in the series. And I'm just going to give you a summary of what the... I think I got these off Goodreads. In this Dynamite series debut, Sharon Pfeiffer has introduced an engaging and enterprising heroine in Jane Wheel. Recently let off, let off from her advertising job, separated from her husband Charlie, and colliding head-on with a midlife crisis, Jane is trying to make ends meet as an antique picker, foraging for killer stuff at suburban Chicago estate sales and auctions, garage sales, and flea markets. Before long, she's addicted to the hunt, spending her Friday nights with the classified ads and a street map, outlining her weekend plan for attack. Jane knows that finding the real treasure is all about being in the right place at the right time. But just as she's settling into her new routine, Jane finds herself in the wrong place and at quite the wrong time, stumbling over her neighbor Sandy's dead body. So from what I remember about this one, because I have not reread these, um, these were really well written. And I, th I think it's kind of interesting because it's got the, uh, this is back in 2001, so eBay was around, but... You know, was YouTube even around? I don't think YouTube was around then. Um, no, it wasn't. <laughs> and so you didn't see all the picker videos and stuff that you have now where people are out showing you what they got on... Was Facebook even around? No, Facebook wasn't around. Goodness sakes. Um, yeah, so none of that stuff was out there. Not Marketplace, none of that kind of stuff. So yeah, just a different time and I think it's an interesting read. Uh, the next one is called This Pen for Hire by Laura Levine. A Jane Austen mystery. I know a lot of people are big fans of this one. Uh, it's just a hoot. They're 19 in a series. It's the first one came out in 2002. Smarmy personal ads, daring declarations of love, writer for hire, Jane Austen has penned them all. But when one of the lo love connections she made is broken up by murder, Jane finds herself freelancing, free of charge and uncovering more than she bargained for. This one is just, she's got her cat, um, Prozac, and she's got a wacky neighbor who's kind of hit and miss in the being a good friend <laughs> and just just a fun read all around there's all kinds of it's not maybe a traditional cozy in some respects it's got yeah I guess well, I don't know I guess it is but um I kind of lumped this one along with ooh, what's the other one I can't remember off the top of my head I don't have it here um there's another author that is similar she's a little more hard-boiled um not well hard boiled for a cozy anyway yeah if you haven't read uh any of the laura levine get into those because they are awesome uh the next one is uh another one that i think a lot of people do know about now i don't know how many in the series i didn't write that down mum's the word by kate collins it came out in 2004 it's a flower shop mystery abby knight is the proud owner of her hometown flower shop but a new low-cost competitor is killing her profits, and black and a black SUV just rammed her vintage Corvette in a hit-and-run. She's determined to track down the driver, but when the trail turns deadly, the next flower arrangement might be for her own funeral. So I probably read about four of these when they came out, and I didn't realize how many that they were still going. I think they are still, the series is still going. And there was a Hallmark movie with Brooke Shields in it, and I did watch that, and I don't. it didn't really go along with the... I, I didn't think it with the story, the book so well, but um, I didn't think it was awful. I think some people really didn't like it, but I, it was okay. Uh, the next one, these are a couple from, let's see. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> the Imitation to Murder by Elizabeth Bright. 2005, A Card Making Mystery. Number one. This is a pseudonym for Tim Myers, who writes a lot of stuff. Uh, three books in this series. I really like this one when it came out. I am a paper person. I love crafting. I love putting, gluing paper to paper and uh, collecting supplies, obviously, from my last, all my other videos. Um, 
I just love that kind of stuff. I've always loved stationery. You know, you go in stationery, there's pens. There's so many cool little things. I just loved all that. So anything with relating to like a paper craft kind of thing. I did like the Laura Child scrapbooking mysteries. Um, anything related to that, I just enjoy usually. Uh, this one's Jennifer Shane's brainchild of a shop. Custom card creations hasn't been all glitter and tinsel. Customers are scarce, and after finally landing a client, Jennifer hears a murder over the phone. And when she received a threatening note, it's clear someone has designs on her life, too. So, yeah, this is one that I wish had gone longer, but that is my curse as a reader, as I t tend to find things that <laughs> one or two books and then they're gone. Uh, the next one is Consigned to Death by Jane K. Cleland, 2006. This is a Josie Prescott Antiques Mystery. There are 14 in this series. After a price-fixing scandal at her prestigious New York auction house, Josie Prescott moved to New Hampshire coast to restore her reputation and perhaps a few antiques along the way. As an antiques dealer, Josie knows how to make an honest assessment, and she's about to land her largest account. But when the owner of a collection is found stabbed to death, Josie's fingerprints are all over his possessions and the murder weapon. Suddenly, Josie's innocence appears as tarnished as an old relic. Everybody's got their eyes on her, especially the local police chief, who may or may not be in love with her. Now it's just a matter of time before Josie can produce enough evidence to clear her name or fall into the clutches of a real killer and find herself consigned to death. This one um, is really well written. I This one also had... I know the author collaborated with... Um, a lady who she used to be on all like, like the HGTV when they do antiques kind of shows. She was on there quite a bit. I think they did an auction show. Um, she's, she's a famous auctioneer in Chicago, I believe. So she did a lot of research in that and tried to figure out, you know, the basics of antiquing and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's really, it's really good. Um, the next one, again, this has to do with crafting and stuff. It's called Stamped Out by Terry Thayer. It came out in 2008. Uh, it's a Stamping Sisters mystery. There were three in the series. While helping her father restore the town's famous Winchester Mansion, rest restoration expert and professional rubber stamper April Burchert must also help prove his innocence when the discovery of a skull in the abandoned guest house behind the mansion has all eyes on him. Again, another crafting one, so I really enjoyed that one. This one's called A Crafting Killing by Lorraine Bartlett, 2011, a Victoria Square mystery number one. There's eight books in this series. Sounds like it's crafting, but it's not. The last thing Katie Bonner wanted was to become manager of an artisan's alley. But when her business partner, Ezra Hilton, is found bludgeoned to death, she has no other choice. Business under Ezra has been faltering, but was it enough to provoke someone to murder? Only Katie can find the answer. So this one takes place in an antique mall kind of thing, and it's uh, it was pretty good. I like, I like my descriptions here, right? Real, <laughs> real in-depth. Um from what I remember, they were really good. <laughs> they kept my interest and I wanted to read more. Uh, the next one is called the Agatha Christie Book Club, but I think it has changed its name now to the Murder Mystery Book Club. When I read it, it was Agatha Christie Book Club. Number one is by C.A. Larmer. I believe she's from Tasmania. And I think, I think the book takes place in Australia, though. Murder Mystery Book Club, six books in a series. A contemporary cozy mystery for those looking for fun and adventure for the, at their next book club. When Alicia Finley walks out of her boring old book club and decides to start a new one, one devoted to her favorite mystery writer, Agatha Christie, little does she know her new club is about to stumble into a mystery of their own. It's a mystery so baffling it would leave even the queen of crime scratching her head. After gathering seven crime buffs together, including young librarian Missy, as ditzy as Miss Marple and as sharp, I don't agree with that summation there. That's I don't think Miss Marple was ditzy in the least. Um, but fashionista Claire, paleontologist Perry, both stylish and fastidious like Perot, dashing Dark Anders, Doctor Anders, a poison expert, and socialite Barbara Parler, Parler, sorry, Alicia grows suspicious when one of them fails to show up for the next book club. Uh, and C. A. Larmer has written several books, and I usually just buy whatever comes out. They're mostly on Kindle. This was on Ku. Um, when I last looked. So if you're interested in that. And then I've got a couple runners up here that were books that aren't necessarily cozies, but are just really well written and I think deserve attention. Um, this first one is called The Night She Died by Dorsey Simpson. It came out in 1980. It's cozy-ish. It's cozy adjacent, if you will. It's, uh, it's, it's got a real inspector. So it's probably more along the lines of like maybe Midsummer Murders and Inspector Morse. Um, the Night She Died is the first book in the Inspector Thanet Mysteries, but you may enjoy reading the series in any order. Storm. 
<laughs> British police detective Luke Thanet tracks a housewife's killer in the debut novel of an award-winning mystery series in the P.D. James Manor. Luke Thanet is a British police inspector with a soft heart, bad back, and bloodhound's nose for murder. When a young woman is found stabbed through the heart with a kitchen knife, Thanet and his partner, the brusque young Mike Lynham, rush to the scene. Julia Holmes lies dead in her front hall, wrapped in an overcoat, her handbag missing. The perpetrator could have been a burglar, a jealous husband, or a spurned lover. But Detective Inspector Thanet never leaps to conclusions and always takes his time. It seems the key to finding this killer looks 20 years in the past. And there are 15 in this series in this one. And then the, my last book that I'm going to talk about is called Book to Die by John Dunning. It came out in 1992. There were five books in the series. Uh, it's Cliff Janoway number one. Again, this is more about a homicide detective. This might lead more towards just your straight inspector type uh, mystery. Denver homicide detective Cliff Janaway may not always buy, play by the book, but he is an avid collector of rare and first editions. After a local book scout is killed on his turf, Janaway would like nothing better than to rearrange the suspect's spine. But the suspect, local lowlife Jackie Newton, is a master at eluding the law, and Janaway's wrathful brand of off-duty justice costs him his badge. Turning his lifelong passion, Janaway opens a small book. Uh, opens a small town. Uh, sorry, turning his lifelong passion, Janaway opens a small bookshop, all while learning for, while well, searching for the evidence to put Newton away. But when prized volumes in a highly sought-after collection begin to appear, so do dead bodies. Now Janaway's life is about to start a precarious new chapter as he attempts to find out who's dealing death along with the vintage Chandlers and Twains. So this again, another very well-written book. So those are my books that I'm sharing. <laughs> um, and still being blessed. Anyway, so that is it for me today. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.